we're looking at some fencing uh, down here. It's around some electrical transformers, um, so kind of a barricade. We did this for Rivers Metal. This is under one of the apartment complexes here downtown. This has been probably five or six years ago. You can see at the bottom here, we're, already, we're seeing quite a bit of rust. We're seeing some bubbling. This is gonna be because snow and salt piles up against this. We're really, really close to the road. So definitely in the winter, this is just buried in snow and ice all winter long. This is an area where there was an overlapping seam. It's stitch welded. We did not seam seal this. It doesn't look like, I, I don't quite remember. We probably asked if they wanted it seam sealed. They said no, probably because of just the budget of the job. Because if we go to seam seal all of this, this is a lot of linear foot of seam. That would take a really long time, be very expensive. And that material that we use to seal it with is also um, a very, very expensive. Another interesting thing is up here along these edges, these are going to be laser cut or plasma cut pieces right along that sharp edge. It's always really, really hard to get powder to stick to that, to build on that, likes to run away. That's where you start seeing coating failure first. So this is obviously way up in the air. This isn't sitting in uh, snow or water or ice or salt, but it is starting to rust right along those edges. That's common. So really sharp edges, powder coating runs away from harder to build film on those edges. This powder, again, is a 60% black powder. It has a really, really good pill flow, which means that the powder flows out really well, so it runs away from edges even more. Um, but it ends up looking very smooth when we're done with it. That's why we like this powder and why we spray it quite a bit. It's faded. This gets a lot of sun um, from noon on because we're facing the west here. This was a 60% gloss to begin with. It's probably down to like a 10 or 15% gloss now. And I would say the black has even lost a little bit of its color. And it's, say it's almost on the verge of chalking. So I'm really not getting any like whiteness away from it, but this is what I would start to call that this is a chalking and fading. We're kind of getting that white look on the black. That's interesting, I haven't seen this powder fade very much, mainly because I don't get to see products out in the field that have, we coated several years ago. Um, so a way to, to avoid that and to make it hold up better would just be a better quality powder to begin with. This is a pretty decent outside durable powder, but when you start talking three, four, five years, unless you have a special formulated super durable powder coating, you're gonna have that. Most powders that are the cheapest um, and the most readily available that every manufacturer has sitting on the shelf are regular durable, and so they're only going to tell you that that's going to hold up for one year color and gloss and it's definitely been uh, a lot more than one year so when i see stuff like this um, it concerns me a little like obviously that this is starting to bubble underneath here this is going to peel and fall away really the only thing that we could have done is is seam sealed this um, but again the customer didn't want us to do that so when we're having to do big fence pieces like this this is obviously a pretty big piece i mean it starts right here comes all the way over to here. So I'm always, when I'm looking at something this big, I'm thinking how are we gonna fit it in our booths in our oven? How are we gonna hang it? We've got some pin joints over here, some hinges. So I'm thinking, what, honestly, I don't remember exactly how we hung this when we did it, but I'm guessing we went out of where those hinges are at. And then we would have hung it along the other end. We would not have hung this up and down because it wouldn't have fit uh, in our oven at the time. I think we actually laid this down horizontally and we probably would have hung out of each one of those points and it was laying like this. And we probably hung off of, there's some holes here for a drop pin, so we probably hung out of that. And we probably hung out of, around one of these areas. But when you're talking about big stuff like this, uh, and I'm quoting big stuff like this, I'm always thinking about how are we gonna process that. As far as blasting is concerned, we can just forklift this, put it on a car, it'll go right into the blast room. It's when we're uh, powder coating it, we gotta hang it so we have minimal things touching it, so that way we don't have touch up. And then it's gotta be stay sturdy on that cart and be able to move it through all of our processes without falling or touching anything. So that's where it gets complicated, especially when you're talking about a real big piece and heavy piece like this.